What's up YouTube? It's your boy Josh Reese back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the OAT, but make sure to smash that like button and subscribe and we'll get started. So, um, the OAT or the Optometry Admissions Test is, you know, it's a big test. Like the MCAT, like the GRE, like the GMAT, the DAT. You're going to have to take it to get into the... Um, graduate school that you uh, want to get into right that's that's the whole point of those like the sat and act for college a college before they can feel comfortable about admitting you into their class you know I recommend you to be an optometrist uh, or a doctor wherever you're going to go they they need to see how does this person compare on the same test to the other you know 700, 800, 1,000 applicants that took the same test. Now, some schools might, you know, uh, accept a different test. That's okay. But 99% um, of people take the OAT going to optometry school. And so that's what I took. You know, some people, you know, GRE might be a little easier if, you do, if you're not really into the sciences. But OAT was just fine. So today I'm going to be talking about the hardest thing about the OAT. Now the absolute thing that stressed me out before, um, the absolute you know, thing that was hardest during the test, and um, right, just the bane of my existence whenever I think about the OAT and, and try to forget it. So and that is the content. Um, just the sheer amount of material that it covers. Um, you might think, um, you know, he's going to talk about the way that they test you or, um, you know, the, the reading section or the physics section. But no, that's actually okay. Once you figure out that it's more of a psychological exam that's testing whether or not you can think like a doctor, um, it really becomes easy to figure out, um, you know, maybe not easy, but you can kind of get it down how how they are asking certain questions and what they want you to think like and things like that. The really hardest part is that it covers so much. With biology, you need to remember basically everything you've ever learned about biology from the first grade to your senior year of college. And well, if you're not in your senior year of college, that's too bad, you have to learn it for the test. Um, I remember going into to the Kaplan book and being like, okay, you know, it's probably going to be all the material that's on bio 100, you know, that first biology class that I took. And that's, you know, a big portion of it is um, kind of the first few semesters of biology. But I was so surprised to see on it embryo development, being able to label the parts of, a, of a, the microfilaments and muscles. Um, being able to know different parts of the body, um, physiology that happens with synapses. You know, um, there's just stuff on there, um, speaking about the biology portion now, but kind of in the whole test where you're like, I did not know that was fair game, right? I didn't know that um, it was legal to ask me about these, you know, uh, classes you're probably not going to take until your senior year of college. Um, if you're like me, uh, I hadn't taken them yet. Um, so on an exam, right, that you'd probably take, you know, the summer between your junior and senior year. Now, now that it's probably going to freak some of you out if you didn't know that, if you haven't started preparing for the test. Um, and I know it freaked me out when I found that out. And I thought, well, okay, that's it. I'm not going to do well on the OAT. I'll still take it this year, but I'm just going to accept that I'm going to just have to reapply next year because no way that I'm doing that. And even though I hadn't taken anatomy and physiology yet or um, physics two, some of those classes that are recommended for it, um, I still ended up getting above the 90th percentile in every major section. So if you're scared like me, just know that you can prepare yourself well enough to have any optometry school consider you. Um, so, so don't you worry about that. Now, really, the um, what what you need to do to to prepare yourself for that 
is you really need to surround yourself with people that do own that information. Um, you probably heard me say this a million times, but the number one key to doing well on the OAT is studying questions and problems in a group. Now, why, why it's possible to still do well on, a, a, on an anatomy or a physiology test without having taken it is the reason behind it all, right? It's, it's testing to see if you're going to be a good doctor. Now, good doctors, um, they are able to think on their feet, even if they don't necessarily know the answer to a problem, know how to cure this patient. You know, they are going to be able to, you know, think on their feet, be able to narrow it down to a solution and give the best advice, you know, um, and maybe even know when to refer to another doctor, right? Know when they're out of their league. So this, um, this test is meant to deliberately find things you don't know. I guarantee you while you're taking the OAT, there's going to be maybe five to 10 questions per section that you have no idea how to do. You know, you're going to be doing the chemistry section and there you are going to be presented with a chemistry problem that you're like, oh, I remember I didn't have enough time to study every section and I skipped the section because I didn't think, you know, I'd be tested on it. There's going to be things like that in every part of it. You know, oh, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't see a, a problem in my Kaplan book. Test me on, um, you know, the theory of relativity. So I thought I could just skip it, but there it is, right? And so you are going to, whether or not you prepare your hardest or not, be tested on material you don't know on the OAT to kind of get that doctor sense out of you. And you're going to be able to have to break the problem down, figure out what it's actually asking. Um, and once you actually figure out what it's asking, um, the problem becomes super doable. And you know, it's probably d cut down to a 50-50 chance, if not the right answer, once you figure out what it's asking. So once you can kind of do that, figure out, what the question's asking and really, uh, even if you don't know it, you're still down to, you know, maybe the, just the two right answers because you know the other ones. I remember this problem with chemistry and it was, it looked to me, this was in the general chemistry section and it looked like an organic chemistry problem. I was so confused um, just because it was about bonds or it seemed that way. Um, and it seemed like the tightness of the bonds, bigness of the things, you know, interchemical relationships. I was like, okay, what's going on here? But I was able to really read into the problem, figure out what it's doing. And it, at the bottom of it all, it was talking about just, um, you know, covered up with fancy words. But at the end of the day, it was asking which molecule would be the smallest, which molecule would be the biggest and you had to rank them. And, you know, once I was able to just get that, then it became super easy. And you're provided with a periodic table, and you're like, okay, if these ones were together, these ones would be biggest, those ones would be smallest. Ended up being a pretty easy problem if I didn't let it get in my head that I didn't know it. So, my advice to you, right, is take every course that you can before the OAT, you know? Um, if you can take all the physics classes recommended, all the biology recommended, all the chemistry recommended, and make sure you're pretty good at, you know, quantitative reasoning and math, and pretty good at, um, you know, writing, reading, um, then do it, right? Just make sure you have all of those questions, those, those uh, you know, insights under your belt. But my biggest advice is make sure to not take those classes too seriously. When you're preparing for the OAT, don't say, oh, I'm not gonna prepare in this section because I already took a class on that and it's fresh in my mind. Prepare for every section because you, it, you, you know too much, right? The, the, cl the class isn't going to, you know, test you in depth about these physics two principles or these advanced organic chemistry principles. They're going to be, you know, questions that'll, you know, that are going to try to, you know, assess your ability to, to be able to think on your feet and be a doctor, 
hidden in biology, hidden in chemistry, hidden in physics. So, um, right, just prepare for the OAT like you're preparing for the OAT. It's not a college exam, right? It's not testing whether or not you know that information. It's the OAT. So study in a group. Make sure you're surrounded with people who have taken the information that you don't, right? And the group will help you be able to think differently and approach every question like an optometrist would, right? Or a doctor or wh whatever you're doing. And make sure you take those prerequisites, but prepare on the side. So that's my biggest advice, and that's the hardest part about the OAT. There's a ton of material, but don't worry. You've got this. See ya. Bye.